it's busy. It's building. New factories are going up with the assurance they carry of increased prosperity. New homes are under command of new families moving in. It's a barometer of confidence in the future of my town. A confidence that comes from knowing its many advantages. The excellent schools, for example, that serve their children. And the playgrounds available for recreation. Comforting to the happy fathers and mothers who live here and call it home. For my town is home in the pleasantest sense of the word. From the early call of the milkman, through a day of normal activities, one gets the feeling that this is a community of good neighbors. The kind of a place you'd like to live in, perhaps grow old in. The kind of a place you'd take pride in, that a great many people take pride in. That's my town. What's making it all tick? What's welding it into a going community? Many things, of course. But one of the most essential factors in its growth is communications. Communications provided by the telephone company and designed, among other things, to give my town the means for transacting business, the means for communicating information, for seeking help, for keeping old friends in touch. Yes, communications and the telephone company that provides them are part of every community in America. The welding force that joins them into a nation of neighborhoods, communicating with each other and with every country of the world. And like my town itself, the telephone company is more than buildings and vehicles, poles and switchboards. It's people, many people in many places, doing many different jobs. Like the operators who handle telephone calls in my town. Here in the central office, you can feel the pulse of the community. The flashing lights on the switchboard reflect the activity of the town. Thank you. It begins to stir in the early hours of the morning. Your name and number? It reaches its peak in the rush hours of daytime. That's Pennsylvania Place, please. Thank you. And then settles back for the night. It's the job of the traffic department to handle this changing volume of calls. It has to be ready with enough equipment and enough operators, 24 hours a day, to meet the customer's demands for service. From the earliest days of her training, every operator learns to think of her job in terms of service to the community. This is information. May I help you? Yes, I'd like the new number of Wilson's Meat Market. 1191 Sycamore Street, please. One moment, please. The number is right 56240. Right 56240. Thank you. You're welcome. Operator. In addition to supplying information, operators put through all kinds of calls, many of them to out of town points near and far. And for each call they handle, they record the facts needed to accurately bill the customer. The calling number, the place called, and length of the conversation are all noted for use by the accounting department. Sometimes, an operator handles calls that are more urgent than others. Operator? Operator, there's been a bad accident. Two cars head on. Please get a doctor and an ambulance. Can you give me the address, please? It's right outside my house, Old Woods Road near Van Dyke. Hurry, please. Thank you. We'll get help to you as fast as possible. Thank you. The telephone operator's tradition of staying on the job in times of disaster is well known. It's a responsibility they willingly accept and take pride in. Whether the call be emergency or routine, 
the operator performs a service that is vital to the business and social life of every thriving community in the nation. And that certainly fits my town. It's a community on the go. New shopping areas to keep pace with demand. New construction of all kinds. New factories are going up, creating greater job opportunities with all that they hold for my town and its people. Homes are being built to house the increasing population of workers and their families. They all need communications, and the telephone company has to be ready to supply them. Connecting these new telephones is the job of telephone installers. Each morning, they gather at the plant work center to get the day's assignments from their installation supervisor. Hi, Ted. Hi. Your first day, huh? That's right. Well, I guess these will keep you busy. Better start with this new installation for John Gardner, 406 Melrose. Say, how did things go down to plant school? Well, I think I learned a lot, but uh, I'll feel better when this first day is over. <laughs> OK, Ted. I'll stop in later and see how you're getting along. Right. See ya. your house? Yep. Could you tell me something? Uh, sure, if I can. Where does this wire go? Well, you see, this is a telephone wire. And it's going to run from your house to the big cable on top of that pole. How come it's so big on the pole and so little down here? That cable's got about 100 wires inside of it, and each one of them connects to a phone in somebody's home or office. <laughs> The cable then travels from pole to pole until it reaches our central office, where all the little wires are connected to switching equipment. The switching equipment completes the phone calls automatically, or sends them to the operator. Then your phones will be ready for service. That is, they will be as soon as I hook them up. Well, I'm on my way to the store. So long. So long, son. I'll have them hooked up by the time you get back. My, it looks just fine. Your phones are ready, Mrs. Gardner. Right now, you can call anywhere in the world if you want to. Good. And uh, here's your new directory. Your name will appear in the next issue. Meantime, people can find you through information. Well, thank you. It's so nice to have a telephone. Hi, Ted. Hi. How's it going, boy? Just fine. Uh, have any trouble on the job? Nothing special. But I did have a youngster asking me some questions. And they got me thinking. I install phones, and uh, I know all the steps. Well, that's part of my plant training. But where do the other departments come in? I mean, how do they fit in the act? Well, I guess that's a natural question for a newcomer, Ted. You're curious, and you should be, about how your job fits in with others in the company. Well, it's kind of a big order, Ted. But I can tell you this. All of us in the telephone company are organized to do just one thing, to give people good telephone service. Now, to do that, and do it right, takes a lot of people with a lot of different skills. Now, I know you've been through this at the plant school, but let's just review it. Say there's a new family, uh, like the gardeners here, move to my town and want telephone service. Chances are someone in the family goes to the telephone office and puts in an order. Or the order could be telephoned in. Either way, it's handled by one of our service representatives in the commercial department. The service rep makes the customer feel at home, gets the name and address, and how the name is to be listed in the directory. You see, she wants to be sure the customer gets complete telephone service. These days, homes have telephones wherever it's convenient. And that's as it should be. They want their extensions where they'll be of most value. It could be indoors, say, the bedroom, or outdoors, on a terrace. And we installers can be of help. For instance, 
you'll find that you have lots of chances to suggest locations for telephones while you're working. It's all part of doing a good job. But let's get back to Mrs. Gardner's request for service, right? 